everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Uh, TGIF, congratulations, you made it through another week. Um, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Today we're going to talk about a uh, Dremel tool. And uh, a good friend of the show, Eric Bolf, had uh, requested this because he says, you know, I, I mentioned it a couple times. He never heard about the Dremel tool, wanted to know what it's about and things like that. So we're going to, for those of you who have never known anything about Dremel tool, you're going to know more than you want. Now, today. in 1932, a gentleman by the name of Albert J. Dremel invents this uh, rotary tool. Now, it's not his first invention. He had a bunch of patents, and uh, but this one here really took off. And, and what it is, a rotary tool is nothing more than a motor that's mounted in an enclosure that you can hold. And it's a high RPM, high speed, but low torque motor. And uh, with all the accessories, it really became a useful tool for hobbyists and other people. And I've had one pff, ever since I can remember. So let's go now, check it out. this was my first Dremel tool. And uh, you can see it was pretty pricey even back then at that price, huh? But um, I apologize for not having any modern of the, the Dremel tools. I think they're up to a Model 4000 now. And this is a uh, Model 275. So you can see where they've come. Um, and now, this uh, is your basic Dremel tool, and, and like I said, it's nothing more than a motor encased in a housing that you can grip like this. It has a little collet here, and usually a lock that you can lock the collet and put a, a tool in, a 1 8 inch shafted tool. And um, this one here is just a simple on-off. It has uh, the 20, 28,000 RPM, this one. And it's a single speed. Now they go up to 35,000 or more, but you can see here. And um, this one here, they have a nice cord, nice strain relief. These, these are, and now they make a ton of knockoffs of these tools, but Dremel has always been uh, top of the line. They were made in Racine, Wisconsin until 1993. And uh, then it was bought out by the Bosch, uh, a Bosch company. And uh, so now, um, they're made in different areas. Now to use a Dremel, basically what you would do is you take one of the accessories here, like I said, it has a 1 8 inch uh, shaft. You place it in here like this and locking the shaft, you would close this up. Now there was a little wrench that came with the older models. You could see here and you would take this wrench and just tighten it up. Now that is ready to go. And um, then you would just turn it on. Always you have to have eye protection with these because they spin at such an eye, high RPM. And, uh, and then you would do, this is here, a, a grinding stone. Let me show you some of the accessories that were available for these now, tools. there are hundreds and hundreds of accessories you can put on a Dremel tool, as you can see here. This is, and a lot of times you'll see these Asian kits here that come like this and, and in it, and they're very inexpensive. Uh, that's a silica gel, that's really not part of it. But you could see here the type of uh, accessories that you can put on here, between sharpening stones and grinding stones, and these are little sanding drums, and here are the drums that go on here cutting wheels and wire brushes of all types, brass wire brushes, cut off wheels here, uh, polishing wheels, buffing wheels, and uh, abrasive cut off wheels here. It's, uh, it's a multitude of tools that can be done uh, and used on this now, tool. Quick word about the accessories. Like anything else, you can get the original Dremel accessories, which aren't cheap but uh, really, really work a hundred times better than the ones, the knockoffs that you buy that are, you know, that are unnamed and made overseas or whatever. But these will get you through a job, but just don't expect them to last anything like the original. If you're considering purchasing a Dremel, the one thing I would highly suggest is that you get a variable speed. Now, this was, like I said, my original one, just off and on. But my, later on, I got a secondary one, and this one here is a variable speed, and you can see it's uh, it varies in speed, and you can see the uh, from five thousand to thirty thousand RPM, and a much better model, and you'll pay more, but it's worth it. Now, if you do have a, an original model, uh, there are alternatives. One alternative is the uh, a speed control. They have foot pedal type, they have other type. This one here is a tabletop speed control. This one here is vintage, and you can see it was expensive back then. But uh, look at this, look at this little beauty, huh? And again, this is an original Dremel. And uh, and you could see here when you turn it on, you just use the speed control, solid state and uh, nicely made. And that'll control your speed if you're gonna do any kind of work on a bench or something. I like know that. if you're like me, you wanna see how this vintage speed controller works, okay? Well, uh, first of all, uh, let me start off by uh, turning on. You can see here, 
It's got that cool vintage light in there, that glowing like a <laughs> light in there. But uh, when you turn your Dremel on now, it's gonna, it's not gonna go to zero RPM, and I'll show you. That's the lowest RPM. To the high. And you could use either switch, either the switch here or the switch here to shut it off. Another popular accessory is what's called the flex wand. And what you do is you take off the uh, tip from here, from the, uh, you unscrew this here, this collet, this will screw in uh, onto the Dremel. And then you would take the collet and put it on here, the little chuck. And now you have a flexible wand that you can hold this instead of holding the, the whole Dremel machine. If you're doing intricate work or carving or something, these are bigger wood carvers and whatnot. Now here's an example of a router uh, accessory that you can put on. This is an older one here. This is the newer one. And you can see here, well, one interesting thing, you can put the bits in here. Any additional bits that you might have will fit into the handle here. But uh, you can see it raises and lowers over here. And you can have as much as you want sticking out here. And by using this like this, you can make engravings or cut out. And you can use this across a straight edge. It also has a fence that goes on here. So that's a nice accessory. Next now. up, we have the uh, drill press attachment for the Dremel. This is an older one. The new one is a little bit different works the same way. Uh, it has your basic base here. You see these little slots. You can bolt down something if you had to. By no means this is a precision drill press, but it does get the job done. You can see here. And um, some of the uh, features that this drill press has, you know, it takes less than a minute to put your drill press uh, motor into the drill press. You can see here it, it will cut it, you know, give you a straight hole. Uh, it has your little depth stop over here so you can adjust your depth of uh, cut that you want to cut and it will stop where you want to cut it um, obviously you would bolt this down to a uh, a larger piece of wood or something but um, another thing that it has which is pretty interesting is you could cut uh, you could switch this whole thing into a horizontal boring machine now here it's set up into its horizontal boring mode so that if again if this was bolted down if you had a, a bore something horizontally and again you could raise and lower it here you know with just like you would here with a uh with a regular column on a drill press again you could uh or you could mount in a a wheel or something that you had to pass something under so it's a way to hold it horizontally that's a nice little feature of the okay press. in case you want to see this in action i'm going to cut through a small piece of plexiglass here just random just a small hole in the end just to show you how this operates we'll turn it on You now you could see a nice clean hole in the plexiglass. It, uh, like I said, it will give you a straight hole. Drills into wood, whatever you have to. That's just a quick drill bit. It's that same hole with the uh, protective plastic peeled back, so you can see what it looks like. Here's how long it takes to take the motor out of the drill press. A couple turns here, a couple turns here, lifts right out. So it's a real easy operation. Now, with all the accessories we have, my most used are probably the little drum sander here. Uh, the cutoff wheel here, uh, the sharpening stone here, you can, it's a, any kind of grinding stone, and of course the wire brush. Now the wire brush, this one here is an Asian knockoff, and, and let me tell you, they, they spit wires out, they're not the best. The original Dremel ones uh, that might look like this, that, you know, they're expensive, they might run about five bucks a piece, but, and this one you could probably get ten or fifteen for five, but, you know, you, it's a trade-off. So let me show you how it now, works. here we have a rusty punch i'm going to show you what that little wire brush can do on here now you can see we just did the top half of the punch here and you can see it got rid of most of the rust now i'm going to run i'm going to run a buffing pad over it and show you what kind of polish you can get now obviously we don't have it down to a really polished area but i'm going to show you what that does Okay, I just did two sides with here. You can see I did the Stanley side here with the polish. Came out real nice. And the opposite side. And you can see that's just with the, you know, obviously I didn't do any sanding, any buffing. But you can see what a nice job it does as far as polishing, grinding, sanding. Okay, and all the newer Dremels, uh, they have a, uh, a wrenchless collet here, a chuck that you can tighten up. 
This one here has a couple flats on it that you could use a wrench, but uh, let's say we're going to use my one of my favorite uh, attachments, the sanding drum. You place it in here, just put your finger on the spindle lock here like that, and you tighten it up, and that's it. It's tight, and uh, it's not going anywhere. Now, one of my favorite tools of the Dremel is the uh, drum sander here, and, and you can see how, uh, how that operates, and we're going to just do... Take this uh, rust. I'm going to show you how quickly it can remove a, a lot of rust, and it's great for sharpening edges and things like that. Metal, wood, glass, fiberglass, everything. Now you can see here what a nice job it did on here, and that's you know why no Y brush or anything, but look at that, and uh, just a beautiful job if you had to do an edge or something. I love these drum sanders. Next up, we have one of the most used accessories for the Dremel, and that is the wafer wheel, a little cutoff wheel. This will go through padlocks. This will go through any. This thing is fantastic. Let me show you on a, on a, a nail how quickly it'll go through a nail. It's just these things are great. Not only will it do a quick job of cutting through, but it leaves a beautiful finish on the cut surface when you do finish okay, cutting. Okay, next up I just want to cover. This is a Craftsman rotary tool, and it's cordless, okay? It's got a battery pack here that uh, clips right into the back. And uh, this is great if you have something you have to do, if you have to cut something off outside or whatever. But normally go for the corded tools when you can, but in an emergency this is good to have. Here's the rotary switch on here. Let me show you how that works. You can hear it's pretty quiet. You can see it does a good job. But uh, again, I would, uh, if you're going to opt for your first tool, I would opt for a corded one. So in closing, I think that just about covers all of... Uh most of what you'll need to know about the Dremel tool, if you were unfamiliar with it, you are now. And as the uh, famous entrepreneur and world traveler Rich Palumbo once said, he said, I would give up all my tools before my Dremel. So it is a really handy tool to have. And maybe you might need one. Maybe you might look for one. So anyway, thanks very much for tuning in. Hope you have a nice day. Take care now. Bye-bye.